Welcome back to Law Sessions and this Land Law Session on Easements. This is the second part in our four-part series and what we will carry on considering, of course, is the uh, Railingborough Park requirements. We saw that with Railingborough Park there are four requirements and we were last discussing the analogy or drawing by analogy current easements uh, and seeing if a contemporary or new situation would amount by analogy with an existing easement. Now, in the last requirement uh, that we considered in that it must be capable of forming the subject matter of a grant, what we saw was that there must be a capable grantor and grantee and also that it must, of course, be, uh, the, be capable of forming the subject matter of a grant whereby if there's an existing easement, then by analogy, you can, of course, have uh, an easement being found. You cannot create new easement. If there is sufficient similarity to an existing easement, you can argue that the right you want to claim is an easement. Example, if I want to claim an easement to park a bicycle, for example, in a hallway, then the right to store coal in a shed, which has already been accepted as an easement in Wright and Macadam, and to park a car, a right which is recognized as an easement in Blenheim Estate and Ladbrook Retail Park, you may be able to argue that the circumstances in both those cases warrant your wanting to park your bike in the hallway to be able to amount to an easement. The last requirement then under that fourth head is that the right must not totally exclude the servient owner. So you must ensure that the right does not prevent the servient owner from using his land altogether. The point on that, of course, is that in an exam question, it generally manifests itself whereby somebody is asked, for example, where a person is parking a vehicle in a particular spot. The problem with that, of course, is if you're parking a vehicle in a particular spot, Although parking may amount to an easement, parking in a particular spot may not. And that, of course, is so because you would arguably be preventing the servient owner from using that par particular piece of land altogether. Now, if you do not meet the conditions laid down in Railingborough Park, it simply means that you do not have a right that is capable of being an easement. Now, the significance of that, of course, is that an easement is a property right. It gives you a proprietary right, which, of course, you can transfer or use or you can enforce against someone else. If you cannot meet Railingborough Park, then all you have is a license. Simply, a license is permission to be on someone else's land. So if, for whatever reason, the requirements, even one of them, in Railingborough Park is not met, then you simply have a license and the discussions will take place on that basis. So as I said, the first thing you have to consider is whether or not you meet the essentials of Railingborough Park. The second requirement, of course, is to consider even if the right that you're seeking to claim amounts to the essentials of Railingborough Park, has a right been acquired or created in your favor. So, has an easement been acquired? Has an easement been created in your favor? And as you look at the creation of the easement, you must consider if the easement which is created is a legal easement or an equitable easement. So, what is important here is the application of Section 1 of the Law of Property Act 1925. And when you consider if an easement has been created, easements are created either by grant or by reservation. The grant of an easement simply means that the dominant tenement is sold off. Now, this is one difficulty that law students tend to have in understanding what is the grant of an easement and what is the reservation of an easement. But it is fairly simple. simple. It means that if the dominant tenement owner then sells off the dominant tenement and retains the servient, 
He grants the person buying the dominant tenement an easement. If, however, he retains the dominant tenement, so he keeps white acre in our scenario and walks over black acre, then that is a reservation of an easement. And you will see how the cases have dealt with them differently. So, how can you grant an easement? What happens when you sell off the dominant tenement? How can you grant the easement? Well, you can grant an easement expressly in a deed. And if that is done, it makes it a legal easement. Now, as I go through these, I will let you know if it's a legal or an equitable easement because these will become important when we look under the third head of protection. So, an easement can expressly be granted in a deed. It makes it a legal easement. It can ex expressly be granted in a written contract. That makes it an equitable easement. Remember that any right in land must be in writing, and as such, that would make it an equitable easement. You may acquire an implied grant of necessity. If that happens, it will be a legal easement you can acquire an implied grant of mutual intention. Again, if that's the case, it makes it a legal easement. You can acquire or create an easement on the basis of an implied grant under the rule in Wildon and Burroughs. Now, this can be legal or equitable, and we will discover as, I as we explore further how this can happen. So the rule in Wheeler and Burroughs allows you to be able to acquire an easement, either a legal easement or an equitable easement. And the simple distinction is whether or not a deed has been used to sell the land or whether a written contract has been used to sell the land. You can acquire an easement under the implied grant under Section 62 of the Law of Property Act 1925, and you can acquire an easement under prescription. Now, Section 62, as well as the Law of Property Act, if you acquire an easement under either of these, then that type of easement will be a legal easement. Now then, those are the ways to grant an easement. How do you reserve an easement? So what if you own black acre and white acre you sell off black acre and you retain white acre but you still want to be able to walk across black acre in order to get to the main road well you can reserve an easement to yourself by an express reservation by deed this of course makes it a legal easement you can have an implied reservation through necessity that will also make it a legal easement. And you can have an implied reservation through mutual intention. Again, a legal easement would be found in that basis. If you notice, these are the only three ways that you can acquire a reservation of an easement. And this is important to understand that equity will not assist you in the context of a reservation. Because frankly, the law considers that you were best placed when you were selling off Black Acre, which is a servient land, to have thought about retaining an easement to yourself. So, when you consider Section 1-2 of the Law of Property Act 1925, it defines the interests in land that are capable of being legal, and it applies to the creation of easements in both unregistered and registered land. Now, if we were to go through each of these then and consider the ways that I've mentioned as it relates to uh, grant and reservation, let's look at each of these in turn. Let's start with the express grant in a deed. An express grant in a deed is a legal easement. And of course, that makes sense because you're using a deed in order to be able to grant this easement. Now, this is an agreement. A deed is an agreement made knowingly and deliberately between two people it is done in the form of a deed and it meets the requirements found in the law of property miscellaneous provisions act of 1989 now deeds are not as formal as they once used to be but it still does require that it be in writing and that it is clear on its face that it is intended to be a deed it must be signed by the person making the deed 
in the presence of a witness who attests with signature and it must be then what is called delivered as a deed. So in that case, you have an express deed uh, granting uh, 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 an easement and that will make it a legal easement. What about an express grant in a written contract? Well, this will amount to an equitable easement. Now, the first thing is that it must satisfy the Law of Property Miscellaneous Provisions Act writing requirements. So if it is in a written contract, say, but let's say for argument's sake, for whatever reason, it didn't quite make it into being done as a deed, but it is in a contract. Then the fact that it doesn't meet the deed requirements, however, it meets the writing requirement under Section 2 of the Law of Property Miscellaneous Provisions Act, and it is signed by the parties, then if the contract contains all the express terms of the agreement, the law says that it creates an equitable interest in respect of the person who is seeking to obtain the right of an easement. When we come back, we will look at how one can obtain a grant of an easement by implication. So the circumstances in which the law will imply an easement in circumstances where the parties have made no express provisions. After the break, we will continue. <music> 